Good to be with you this afternoon. My name is Jeff Raymond. I'm um, with the, uh, our EOS product management team here at Arista. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. We, we started at you know, the high level of the company and then getting into some of our culture and philosophies related to software. And then obviously into the details of something like an SDK, which is you know, kind of SDN in action in, in many ways in terms of making the network more programmable. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit, and Andre Pesh uh, and I are going to cover Cloud Vision, which is one of our most recent announcements from our uh, software portfolio, um, and, and talk about it in a, in a kind of switching gears a little bit from that, that deep level of integration to something that's a little bit more turnkey for the more mainstream customer base. And so if we take a look at the spectrum of customers out there and looking at it from the perspective of automation. Network automation is kind of one of the, the trends in cloud networking and a lot of the, the principles that were maybe applied to compute in terms of automating the, the compute infrastructure have been reapplied to the networking space. And part of that was the network needed to be more programmable, needed to be able to handle this sort of automation. Well, if we look across the customer base, the type of customer that Ryan was just talking about is going to be in this category here. We call it the do-it-yourself category. They're folks that have full software development staff on board. They're writing their own controllers. They're doing this sort of SDK-level programming to be able to automate and take deeper control of the networking infrastructure. Well, as you move from left to right across the spectrum, there's other categories as well. There's the, what we call the DevOps class of, uh, of, of environment, where you have more of a framework that you're, you're basing your infrastructure on for automation. You're using some scripting, but it's not quite as customized. And then you have the third category over here, which is probably the broadest category, what we call the turnkey, where you're looking at more mainstream, more traditional types of environments that have used infrastructure, just you know, programming from the, from the CLI, but not a lot of automation. And when it, whether it's provisioning, whether it's troubleshooting, whether it's other sorts of orchestration integration, much of that is either difficult or at least done very manually. And so that's really what we're focusing on, given that, you know, obviously with our SDK and, and, and those approaches, we're meeting the needs in the Cloud Titan space. We have tight integration with a lot of the DevOps tools, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, etc. We have published APIs for that particular space. Well, this is really the space that hasn't really started down that journey. Uh, to a more automated infrastructure. And so as we introduce Cloud Vision, Cloud Vision really represents for us a set of software services that run over and above the physical infrastructure. These services build on our EOS heritage, so that, that SysDB model that we've been referring to is where we, we start. And we take that infrastructure, any, any ERIST infrastructure, any types of designs that Anshul talked about, and we take EOS and build it up to be not just a a device or a device level piece of software, but a network wide piece of software that really views the entire network through one uh, interface. And we can use that singular interface to be a common point of abstraction for third parties to integrate with the networking infrastructure. So whether it's controllers, whether it's other orchestration services, et cetera, this is that common point and it helps to simplify. And then once we have this common point and this point of view of the networking infrastructure, we can apply uh, automation techniques over and above that. Turnkey automation techniques through a, a GUI, through a portal that we've built to help our customers kind of click through those approaches to automation. So let's look and see how this builds out. So if we take a typical network infrastructure, you have your spine leaf. As was mentioned, you have this concept of the SysDB state database that's resident on each of the ERISA switches. With Cloud Vision, we abstract this SysDB up to a network-wide level. So in fact, Cloud Vision is EOS. It's the same SysDB architecture, but it's not running on a switch. It's running on a virtual machine, effectively centrally, where we just synchronize the state up to that common point. And so from that common point, we can view into the network state at, from, at one particular point in time. With this, we've abstracted away the physical network. Why does this matter? Well, if we abstract away the physical network, now some of the nuances of the physical network, things like MLAG versus ECMP, things like you know, this chipset versus that chipset, this software version versus that software version, all kind of go away, and we can provide, they don't, sorry, they don't go away, but they go away relative to what we provide northbound. They, so the northbound infrastructure, these cloud orchestrators and what have you, when they need to talk to the network infrastructure, they don't need to be as aware of those details of the physical network. And it makes their lives easier. They can focus on 
what they do best and let the, the networking software focus on what it does best. So this is a more scalable way to integrate the physical networking infrastructure with controllers. And on top of that, we not only have a real-time view of the data, but we have a historic view as well. So now we can look back over time and see what did the network look like at a particular point in time and even roll the network back to those states as well. So when we talk about this integration point that Cloud Vision provides, this is where our ecosystem talks to the Arista infrastructure. So Anshul at the beginning showed kind of a logo slide of our ecosystem partners. This is the, the, the preferred way of integrating through either through whatever open standards-based API they prefer, whether it's our own uh, JSON-based APIs, whether it's something like OVSDB, and what have you. So looking at the cloud orchestrators, the open stack, some of our partners like HP, Dell, this is how their solutions plug into the infrastructure. We have network services partners, things like ServiceNow for a ticketing management system that might need to, to talk in, in terms of task management and task integration. We have uh, services partners like F5 and Palo Alto. We have the overlay controllers, the classic uh, you know, virtualization controller. This is how they talk into the infrastructure. And then we even have our own information on Arista.com. Ken was talking about the concept of being able to proactively tell customers uh, like bug scrub level data. Well, Arista.com, where we manage you know, our websites and so forth, we know this information, we can push it out through Cloud Vision. It can, it can locally pro filter and process that to give our customers proactive notifications on security vulnerabilities, uh, new software versions, even new um, caveats to be aware of. I'm curious on some of the details with the OVSDB integration. Sure. That's, so that's done directly with Cloud Vision. So OVSDB client server is resident there. That's on, right. On Cloud Vision. Okay, That's cool. Right. So um, did you write your own OVSDB schema, or are you using an existing open-sourced one? Um, maybe I'll ask Andre to, to comment. Yeah, no, we're just using the standard OVSDB schema because we want to integrate with all the different uh, SDN controllers that are actually implementing it, right? Yeah. I think this so hard, is hardware VTAP content. is what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, the hardware VTAP. Schema. Rock on. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, just one, another thing. Also, because you have... Uh, SysDB, which is, you know, pub sub kind of stuff. Does, do you also extend that through uh, OVSDB <coughs> Transact as well? Is that how that works, or do you have to be notified elsewhere? Um, I'm not sure I, I quite understood the question, but, the, the, but basically... So the the our, monitor method with, with OVSDB. Yeah, so we use that, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's right. Thanks. So, and I actually, you almost got a, gave me a good segue to my next slide, but there's one more point I want to point out on this slide. Oh, sorry, I'll do better next time. No, no. <laughs> we'll time it just a little bit better. We'll, we'll rehearse. Um, this idea of a network control point, you, even a controller is a, is a very common term. It's just a specific type of controller that we're considering Cloud Vision here. It's a single point of integration to the infrastructure, and it's not just a set of APIs. There's a CLI aspect to it, so you can, you know, from people familiar with the CLI can ac access the state. And there's also a web-based GUI, and that's what we'll be showing you in a demo. So for the segue that I was talking about, if we talk about how a traditional network virtualization controller that uses OVSDB would talk to the physical infrastructure, we, the, the, the traditional approach is very topology dependent. So if you have 200 switches, for example, in your infrastructure, OVSDB is creating 200 unique connections, and it's managing those uh, as needed. If there's a network event, uh, a Mac move or something like this, OVSDB is going to have to keep that information up to date over time. With Cloud Vision, we provide an abstracted view. So Cloud Vision is handling the physical infrastructure through its SysDB state synchronization. To your point, the OVSDB server sits up here in Cloud Vision, and now your overlay controller has a single interface and a single connection. As a matter of fact, this whole concept was, was born out of discussions with our orchestration partners to be able to say, how can we e more easily integrate with the physical infrastructure? So now if there's a network event down here, the networking software is handling that event. You know, the, the reconvergence event, whatever have you, networking software is designed to handle that, and OVSDB can just be doing, like you said, uh, passing the necessary information back and forth to the controller. So in our own testing, just comparing a, a traditional approach to the Cloud Vision approach, we actually see a 10x performance improvement in terms of things like Mac move times and those sort of things in the infrastructure. So as we build on top of Cloud Vision, very much 
Um, there's the, the, the architectural component of the maintaining the state. So there's a lot of different things we can do from that particular point. And I'll give you a highlight of some of these and then we'll dive into a demo of, of specifically um, some of the, uh, the very tangible ones. It's a point of integration. So as Anshul was mentioning, we believe in a best of breed infrastructure. Many of our partners are building controllers out there. We, Cloud Vision is very much built to enhance the integration with those solutions. It's a controller agnostic approach of, effectively. So this is one aspect. Uh, we're gonna focus on how do we automate the network from a provisioning perspective. It's typically the first place you would start. Not just the initial provisioning of a device, but ongoing provisioning. Doing things like config changes and basically letting the operator not have to touch the box as much and reduce possible human error in those cases. Um, I'm sorry, uh, on the last slide I just remembered, you said 10x improvement uh, yeah. in what? What, what improved? Like the, the time it takes for Mac, Mac failover, Mac moves, those sort of uh, rates. So speed of provisioning or moving workloads. That's what it instance. translates to. Okay, exactly. cool. thank you. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, in the other case, uh, we focus on a lot of operational details in terms of what the operator is going to do with our products on a daily basis. Things like network upgrades are a very challenging, cumbersome process. If we look at how some of the cloud guys have solved it, it's a solved problem. They've automated it. They've used their own programming and their own scripting to do that. We want to be able to provide that same sort of service, the same sort of automation to the more mainstream traditional customers using a network-wide upgrade functionality where they can put devices in maintenance mode and production mode and do a, a really a network-wide upgrade without impacting traffic and similarly do the rollback. As, as Anshu will often tell the story, the idea that you need to just get things working again, but it takes a lot of time to manually go device by device to get that network back up and running. We can literally just almost slide that, that, time, that time machine back to a particular point in time. We're gonna also focus on change management with Cloud Vision. The idea that you know, a, change, a maintenance window includes the actual change, but also includes a lot of pre and post checking of that change. <coughs> So if we can automate that for our customers, very common routine uh, type of situation, and make it very clear to them to say, all right, this is what the network will look like before the change. This is what it looked like after the change. This is the differences. And you can dive down into those differences very easily. Hopefully we can help our customers reduce that maintenance window time. And then, or, and then in continuing to enhance the visibility aspects of getting that state that we have and, and making it visible even into the GUI mapping overlay, underlay data, correlating that since it's all coming to that one common point. 